Here we're going to learn about the power rule, which is basically one of the shortcuts that allows us to take the derivative without having to use the difference quotient. For example, f of x equals x to the power of 6. How would we take the derivative of this? Well, if we look at our power rule, our power rule says if we have a function like this, that's x to the power of some value k, the derivative of that is just going to be x to the power of k minus 1, and then with the coefficient of k in front of it. So it's sort of like we're bringing down that k in front, and then we remove one from the exponent. So it's basically as simple as that. So let's do the first question here. f prime of x, or the derivative of f of x, is just going to be 6, that comes down in front, and then what happens is we're going to have that x with the exponent of 5. We just reduce that exponent by 1. There it is. That's it. Derivative of x to the power of 6. Okay, let's try the next one. y equals x. Okay, so what's, in this case, I'm going to use the, the notation y prime. What's y prime, or the derivative of y? Well, let's think about this as the power rule. What's the exponent on the, the x there? It's a tiny little 1, right, that you don't see. So let's follow the same rule. Let's bring down that 1 in front. So we're just going to have 1x. And then we're going to have an exponent of, well, you take away 1 from the exponent, we're just going to have 0. So the derivative of x, 1x to the power of 0, x to the power of 0 is just 1, so y prime is just going to equal 1. All right. So let's do c now. This doesn't look like the other ones, right? We have an x to the power of 4 in the denominator. But the key is, can we represent that x to the power of 4 as a um, in the numerator? And the answer is yes, we can. We can write g of x just as x to the power of negative 4, right? And then follow our same power rule principle. So we bring down that negative 4 in front. So g prime of x is going to be negative 4 x. And then we subtract 1 from the exponent. So negative 4 minus 1, make sure you're going in the right direction, is negative 5, OK? Now, we like to express our answers with positive exponents, so I'm going to rewrite this as g prime of x is equal to, remember the negative 5 puts it in the denominator, so I'm just going to have negative 4 over x to the 5. There we go. There's the derivative of 1 over x to the 4. So let's do d using Leibniz notation, just to change it up and make sure you're okay with it. It's the same thing. This, remember what this means. It just means the derivative of x to the k with respect to x is equal to the same thing, k times x to the power of uh, k minus 1. So again, the first step here should be to rewrite this with one positive exponent. So t squared and the cube root of that, we can write as t to the power of 2 over 3. It should be a 2. 2 over 3. So now let's apply our, our, um, our pattern. So we're going to take the derivative of h, and instead of the derivative of h with respect to x, there's no x there. The independent variable is t. So it's dh by dt equals, same thing, we're going to bring down the 2 thirds in front, t, and then we're going to subtract 1 from that exponent. So 2 thirds minus 1 is negative 1 third. Not a very pretty expression, but let's make it a little bit prettier by making that exponent positive by putting it in the denominator, right? So same as the previous one. The, the t is going to join that 3 down in the denominator, and in the numerator it's just going to be a 2. So 2 times 3t to the power of positive 1 third. And there's our derivative. So what about if we have a value or a, a coefficient in front of the thing we're trying to apply the power rule to? What do we do? Well, you can actually, based on this pattern for the, uh, the constant multiple rule, we can just pull out that k from the derivative. We can basically just multiply the derivative of the function g of x, whatever it is, by a value k. So what that looks like, for example, here, I'm going to use Leibniz notation for this one just because it's a little bit more straightforward. So it's going to look like this. The derivative of... 5x squared with respect to x is going to be, we can pull that 5 out of the derivative. So it's essentially like saying the derivative of that x squared times 5. 
So it's like we just pulled that 5 out of the derivative. So we basically are multiplying the derivative of x squared by 5. We know now that the derivative of x squared, we just bring that 2 down in front. So it's going to be like saying 5 times, bring the derivative in front, or the exponent in front, 2x to the power of 1, or 10x. So there's our derivative. If you notice, essentially all we're doing is we're multiplying that coefficient in front by the derivative of this. So if we notice that, we actually don't need to show this in-between step every time. So for example, for this one here, y prime, I'm basically just going to move that 8 down in front and multiply by that negative 2, so I'm going to get negative 16, and then times x to the power of 7. And that's it. Okay, let's do the next question. So this one, again, it's probably easier if we all write it in the numerator. So this is the same thing as saying 5 times x to the negative 5. And now we just follow our same pattern to find dy by dx. dy by dx equals, well, that negative 5, bring it down in front, times the 5 is going to be negative 25 times x. And that uh, exponent gets reduced by 1, so negative 6. Or dy dx, I can just, uh, well, I want to write the answer with positive exponents, so the 25, negative 25, is going to be over x to the power of 6. That's it. Lastly, d, same idea. Um, y prime is just going to be equal to, well, we're going to bring that 4 thirds down in front, so 12 times 4 thirds, um, 12 times 4 basically, is going to be 48 over 3, right? x to the power of, well, what's 4 thirds minus 1 is going to be, I'm going to subtract 3, 1 third. Nope, that's not, oh yeah, it is right, awesome. So I can just, uh, that's it. That's simplified, has a positive exponent. We don't need to do anything else with that. The constant function rule is the next rule we're going to learn, and it's probably the most straightforward. If we have a constant value, like for example, y equals 5, the derivative of that, remember what a derivative is. If we graph y equals 5, that's just going to be a line that looks like this, right, up at 5. Well, remember what a derivative is. It's just the slope of that line. What's the slope of a horizontal line? y prime is just going to be equal to 0. And that goes for any constant value. So same thing for g of x here. If we do g prime of x, oops, g prime of x, 2 pi is just a constant, right? Um, it's just a number, 6 point something. So in that case, the derivative is just going to be 0. The next rule is the sum and difference rules, and this is very, very useful. Essentially, all it is, very simple, if we have two functions, f and g, and they're being added or subtracted, we can just take the derivative of them separately. So here, like du um, by dx and dv by dx, we just do those two derivatives separately. So going in here to question a, so all we need to do is essentially evaluate the derivatives of the two parts of the function separately. So y prime is going to equal the derivative of 2x, which remember this is like 2x to the 1, so really that 1 comes down, just multiplies by the 2, and then goes away. So it's just going to be 2, and the derivative of 5 is just 0, it's a constant. So y prime, in this case, just equals 2, which makes sense, right? The uh, derivative is just the rate of change, right? And this is the, a linear equation, so it makes sense that the slope of the line 2 is just equal to the rate of change. Again, here we have a quadratic, so in order to find f prime of x, we just need to take the derivative of the three parts separately. So the derivative of x squared is just 2x. The derivative of negative 3x is just negative 3. The 10 goes away because it's a constant. So essentially, f prime of x is just equal to 2x minus 3. Now, if you're starting to understand it, Go ahead of me, try the questions before you actually watch the video, just to test yourself a bit. Okay, so this one, we notice here we have some weirdness going on here and some weirdness going on here. 
let's make the exponents all single exponents, makes it a lot easier to evaluate before we actually find the derivative. So let's just write, rewrite f of x first. So 5x squared, that part's straightforward, minus 3x, now how can we write x squared and the root 3 of that is just going to be x to the power of 2 thirds, right? And then plus 4, x, 4 over x2 can look like x to the negative 2 minus 7. Okay, now that we have that, let's now take the derivative. f prime of x equals uh, 5x squared. So again, that 2 comes down, multiplies, so 10x. Then that 2 thirds is going to come down here and give us negative 6 over 3x to the negative 1 third. Then that negative 2 is going to come down and give us negative 8x to the negative 3. And then minus 0 at that end. That's 7, just be, it's a constant, so it just becomes 0. Now we can simplify. So let's make all those exponents positive, just to make it a little bit nicer. 10x. Oh, we have to simplify this fraction as well. So 6 over 3 reduces to 2. And it's going to be over x to the 1 third. Then we have this minus 8x to the negative 3, which is like this, over x to the 3, and then that's a 0 at the end. So there it is, fully simplified positive exponents, and that is our final f prime of x. So now let's determine the, the slope of the tangent at x equals 1 of this function. In order to do that, we need to find the derivative first, because remember the derivative is just equal to the slope of the tangent. So f prime of x is equal to, so that 2 comes down, 24x minus 18. That's it. Um, and then it says at x equals 1. So if we want to know what the slope of the tangent is at x equals 1, remember this is just the equation of the slope of the tangent, so we're looking for f prime at 1, the slope at 1. So we just plug in that value, 1, and we get f prime at 1 is just equal to 6. There we go. So much easier than using the difference quotient, right? Okay, B. Determine the point on the graph where the tangents are horizontal. So, first of all, let's think about what kind of function is this? You know, it's a quadratic, so where is the tangent going to be horizontal? Well, just thinking, drawing a quick sketch, um, let's just say it looks something like that, right? The tangent is going to be horizontal at this minimum point down here, right? So, what is the slope when the tangent is horizontal? We know that's just going to be where f prime of x is equal to 0, right? So basically we have to find where the slope equals 0. Luckily we have an equation for the derivative already. So we're looking for where f prime of x, we already know that this is 24 minus, oh, 24x minus 18. And we want to know where this equals 0. So this is just an easy equation to solve, um, and in the end, when we, when we solve it, move that 18 over, divide by 24, x simplifies to 3 quarters. So the slope, oh sorry, where the slope is 0 is at an x value of 3 quarters. This becomes a lot useful later when we're trying to find these maximum or minimum points of a function. So here we're trying to find uh, the coordinates where that function, 3x minus 1 over x, uh, where the slope of the tangent is 7. So our first step should be to find the derivative of the function. So I'm just going to rewrite here that y is equal to 3x minus, and I want to represent that as a positive, or as an exponent on the x, x to the negative 1, right? Instead of 1 over x, just makes it easier to apply the power rule. Um, I'm just going to use this notation, dy by dx, for the slope of the tangent. Uh, 3x, the derivative is just 3, as we've discovered, and in this case, negative x to the negative 1, the negative 1 comes down to make it positive 1, x to the negative 2. And then just rewriting that out um, in a nicer format, dy by dx is just going to be 3 plus 1 over x squared. So again, we're trying to find the point at which the slope of the tangent is 7. So remember, dy by dx is the slope of the tangent. So essentially what we got to do is we got to plug in 7 equals 3 plus 1 over x squared and just solve this equation. So 
this becomes 4 equals 1 over x squared and then I'm going to cross multiply that up so 4x squared equals 1 divide by 4 and then because we have an x squared I gotta take the square root of it to get rid of that so x equals 1 over 2 so at an x value of 1 over 2 that's where the slope of the tangent is going to be equal to 7